coffee. It's the drink you have when you're sleepy so you can poop yourself awake. <laughs> but one coffee company is in trouble for how they get that coffee to you. The famous pitchman for a coffee giant, George Clooney, is speaking out after that company was linked to a child labor scandal. As Nespresso's brand ambassador, George Clooney has been the face of the company. Now he's using his voice to say he's surprised and saddened by child labor allegations raised against suppliers to the coffee maker. Clooney is already responding, saying that progress has been made, but clearly this board and this company still have work to do, and that work will be done. Yes, Nespresso has been accused of using child labor to make their coffee, which is disappointing, but also not shocking. I mean, why else would those cups be so tiny? I mean, <laughs> those aren't being made by adults. <laughs> and I'll be honest, this story really made me angry because I hate child labor. One, because it exploits children, and two, because if a kid messes up on the job, you can't get mad at them. Yeah, you're gonna look like an asshole. There's no accountability. <laughs> Yeah, the kid is just like, I was supposed to do a liver transplant, but <laughs> instead, by mistakes, I took your kidney. <laughs> and then you just have to be like, what? Uh, I guess you did your best, okay. <laughs> All right, Dr. Kid. <laughs> and by the way, it's funny how the news seems to care more about what George Clooney has to say about the scandal than the actual CEO of Nespresso, <laughs> right? Because, like, George Clooney said this, like, yeah, where's the boss of Nespresso? It would be like if we found out that McDonald's was serving poisoned beef and the CEO was like, let me explain. You're like, shut up, where's Ronald? We want to talk to Ronald. <laughs> All right, moving on to some good news from Afghanistan, a phrase no one has ever said. <laughs> America's never-ending war with the Taliban might finally be coming to an end. America's longest-running war could finally come to an end. Over the weekend, the United States signed a deal with the Taliban to end the nearly two-decade conflict that gripped Afghanistan in the aftermath of the 9-11 attacks and the subsequent U.S. invasion of the country. The agreement lays out a timetable for the full withdrawal of U.S. and coalition troops from Afghanistan within 14 months. In exchange, the Taliban agreed that it would not allow Afghan territory to be used by any groups or individuals to plot future attacks against the United States and its allies. This is a big deal. The United States and the Taliban might have a deal. And this is huge. Besides Taylor Swift and Katy Perry, this might be the biggest peace agreement of the century. It's huge. And after 20 years and $2 trillion, you have to admit that's a lot of lowered expectations. Yeah? <laughs> no, because America went into Afghanistan like, we're taking out the Taliban and bringing in Western democracy no matter how long it takes. And now America's like, uh, we're gonna leave. Um... <laughs> Just, like, don't do another 9-11, okay? <laughs> now, the deal hasn't been concluded yet because there are still some things that need to be worked out, which makes sense. Because if you think about it, these two countries have been entwined in a 20-year relationship, right? And we all know it's hard to walk away when you've spent that much time together. So, America, let me, let me give you some relationship tips. <laughs> First of all, America, let me just say I'm, I'm proud of you. You've realized that you're in a toxic relationship with Afghanistan and, and you're ready to get out. Now, I want to warn you, for a while, there's, there's gonna be a part of you that wants to go back and <laughs> bomb them in the middle of the night, but <laughs> you stay strong. And you remember, no matter what you think now, there are plenty of other Middle Eastern countries out there <laughs> for you. <laughs> and finally, in some local news close to my heart, New York City is saying farewell to one of its oldest residents. New York City is hanging it up, removing the last remaining payphones from the streets. City workers will remove 30 payphones in Hell's Kitchen alone by the end of March, then rip out about 3,000 more payphones across the five boroughs. Did you know there were that many left? Yeah, this is a sad day for New Yorkers. After so many decades, soon we will no longer have the payphone, which means We'll have to find somewhere else to get hepatitis. <laughs> and, and look, I know, I know we don't need payphones anymore, but they were such a big part of the landscape for so long, you know? You, you could count on them if you locked yourself out of your apartment or, or if you needed to call the mafia and... <laughs> and also, like, like Superman, you know, like payphones. It was cool when he changed in a phone booth. Those are things that are gone. Although, actually, now that I think about it, he didn't have to use that. He could have just flown home and changed. <laughs> Now that I think about it, I feel like Superman was just, like, a secret exhibitionist, you know? He was... <laughs> yeah, he was just changing in the phone booth because he got excited that someone might catch him. He's just, you know? He's just like, oh, no, you, you saw me naked. Oh. <laughs> oh, man, now you're gonna tell everyone, big dick Superman. 
I hope they don't call me that. He's like, get out of here, Superman, you permit? Okay, okay, I go, I've gotta go and save a bunch of kids making tiny coffee cups. <laughs> One last look, okay, gotta go. <laughs>